Notice how the bathtub is still intact. This shining part here, that's the base of the North Tower. Right next to that wall. The parking garage is still here under Building 6. The remains of Building 6, they pulled down with the cable. If it, the towers had slammed to the ground, the seismic chart would have reflected it. And that did not happen. That's the biggest smoking gun. One of the first responders said, I don't remember the sound of a building hitting the ground. Somebody told me that it was measured in retroscale. I don't know how true that is. If the building is hitting the ground that hard, how do I not remember the sound of it? There's another um, story that came, came up. A fellow who worked in the 27th floor of the North Tower, when all the mayhem started, he decided he wasn't going to get any work done, so he was going to go home. He lived on Staten Island. So he walks past Tower 2 towards the ferry terminal. Tower 2, it looks like the fires are out, the boat is in good shape. He gets to the ferry terminal, which is up close, and you can't see the towers from there because it's the bigger buildings blocking your view. And then some idiot, well, he thought it was an idiot, came up to them and said that the South Tower just collapsed. Well, it can't be. They just walked past the building. It was, you know, fires were out, the building was in good health. They didn't feel a building slam the ground. They didn't hear it slam the ground. I mean, this guy must be an idiot, right? They get on the ferry, the ferry goes out in the Hudson River, and they now can see there's only one tower standing. He was just totally blown away. That part of the building doesn't make a thud when it hits. That's how the building landed. Earlier that year, in January, there was an earthquake in midtown Manhattan. The seismic station that recorded the earthquake recorded the principal wave, the primary wave hitting, and then the secondary wave. And the, the timing between those two tells you how far away the epicenter is from the recording station. That was a magnitude 2.4. When the North Tower came apart, it was a magnitude 2.3, which is similar, but it doesn't look at all the same. First time I saw this, I went, what, did they overfilter it or what's going on? Is that first data? As it turns out, this is only the surface waves. No S wave and no P wave. S waves and P waves travel through the earth. If the building had slammed down a bedrock, it'd be like ringing it with a, like ringing a tuning fork. And the signal would have traveled to the plasmic recording station. It's the Palisades one, which is just north of there, about 20 miles. But there's only the surface wave. Now let's think of that. Imagine if you have King Kong reaches over and grabs a tower and chucks it up into space. Just takes, lifts off that weight and removes it. You no longer have that weight pressing down on the earth. It's like getting off your mattress in the morning. When you get up, the mattress recovers. That's a surface wave you know, from unloading. That's the equivalent seismic signal that was recorded for Building 2. And for Building 1, if you turned all of it but the bottom 20 stories to dust, you would get the seismic signal that was recorded, approximately. So all of this stuff in that height is unaccounted for. The towers, you know, Tower 1 had the same magnitude as the Kingdom, but it's 30 times, that's 3 times 10, 30 times more potential energy, height and mass. So it should at least be more than that. <coughs> but the kingdom, you know, was, a very, it was you know, larger than these. For building seven, the seismic signal was equivalent to just the bottom two and a half stories. Eastern had a problem. But no banging, just the removal of the weight. The uh, earthquake, you see that, they call it the snout that leads up to the big wave, this little thing here, the primary wave, and the P wave travels quicker, it's like snapping a rubber band. And then the S wave is more of a, like, wiggling a jump rope. And then the surface waves. That's from the earthquake. 
Now here's from the North Tower's demise. The ground only shook for eight seconds. And there's no lead up to it that you can see. It takes nine and a half seconds to throw a bowling ball off the roof and have it hit the ground. Why did the ground shake for only eight seconds? It didn't hit the ground. Here's the seismic chart. This is after Tower 2's demise. And then Tower 1 makes only a 2.3, and that's uh, estimated the equivalent of a seismic of an earthquake, but that's measured from the surface waves. <clears throat> then we notice down here, the Fox Islands had a little earthquake, that's what that black cluster is. But would you believe, Building 7 is a non-seismic event. You can't really see it picked out of background noise. A 47-story building crashing to the ground. Look at all these quarry blasts. You know, my, have uh, blowing up rock quarries in Pennsylvania and New Jersey. They're recorded. Well, let's, maybe controlled demolitions don't create seismic waves, S&P waves. And off Seattle Kingdom, they blew that up in uh, earlier, like I think it was in 2000, in March or April, I forget the date, March 26, 2000, something like that. And it has primary wave and the secondary wave. You can see that little snout leading up to the bigger wave. Now how long did the ground shake there? The, of the max, of the uh, major part of the event? Well, it, to measure the equivalent in height, it takes about four seconds to drop a bowling ball off the roof of the kingdom and have it hit the ground. Yet the ground shook for the major part of this was nine seconds, but still there was more after that.